Oh, hello, hello, my young friend. So today we're going to be talking about Unit 2, which is going to be cells. So we're going to look at cell structure. Now this should be reviewed, so you should know some of these. So, talking about a typical animal cell, it's going to be round, or at least a not a certain shape. Versus our plant cell. Our plant cell has a cell wall, so it's going to have a rigid shape. Now let's talk about the pieces. So first we have a cell wall, which is going to be found in plants. Plants, it is, has an inflexible barrier, providing structure, support, protection, and it allows molecules to pass through. Again, not in animals. Now we have the nucleus. In both plants and animals, and this is the brain of the cell, contains the directions to make proteins by way of the DNA. The DNA is going to be your genetic material that tells and makes up you. Functions, it controls all portions of the cell. The nucleus again contains the chromatin, which is our genetic material, which you know as DNA, which is going to be deoxyribose nucleic acid. Also inside of our nucleus, we contain a nucleolus, which is a dense part in the center. It will typically be darker. And it is where ribosomes are created. And some cells have more than one nucleolus. Next, we have the nuclear envelope. So the nucleus has this envelope around it that is a double membrane. And it allows proteins to pass through, through what is known as a nuclear pore, or a hole. Such as, if we look here, we see our double membrane. And then we see a pore, or a hole, in which things can pass in and out of the nucleus. If you can think of a wiffle ball that has multiple holes in it, that would be the shape of a nucleus. Next we have the cytoskeleton. It is composed of network of protein fibers. These protein fibers are typically about three of them. They go from the smallest to the largest with microfilaments, intermediate filaments, microtubules, which are the largest. They are constantly changing positions to help maintain the structure and shape of the cell. And the function is to provide structural support and it aids in movement of the cell and within the cell. So again, we see a cross section of the cell here. We see some certain organelles, but then we see all these little cross pieces. These are going to be our cytoskeleton. And again, we see the microtubule, which is the thickest. Then we have our intermediate filament. And then we have our microfilaments, which are the smallest. Remember these, because you will see them again. Centrioles. Centrioles are non-membrane bound, so they're just structures that are sitting inside the cell. There are two, and they consist of hollow cylinders, or the microtubules. Remember, those are the largest types of uh, cytoskeleton, or protein fibers that we will be talking about right now, that lie at right angles to each other. So, here we go. Each one of these yellows are going to be a microtubule. They help in the aid of cellular reproduction. So as a cell actually grows and divides, it will help keep everything where it's supposed to be. So that when it divides, it has equal amounts of different items. So these are not found in plants. The cytoplasm versus the cytosol. The cytoplasm is the area that consists between the cellular membrane and the nucleus. Because the whole area in between those two may consist of organelles, may consist of the cytosol, which is the jelly substance, and it may consist of our cytoskeleton. But everything that lies within the plasma membrane or cell membrane and the nucleus is the cytoplasm. Now, again, that jelly-like substance that is in the cytoplasm that sort of holds all the organelles in place and holds everything where they're supposed to be. It's called the cytosol. Uh, cytosol. It is a clear jelly-like substance in which the, all the organelles are suspended, aids in transport of material, and serves as a place for many chemical reactions to occur, especially for metabolism inside of our cells. Then we have our ribosomes. Our ribosomes are RNA, known as ribosomal RNA, or you might see it as rRNA. It is made in the nucleolus of the nucleus. There are two types. There are free-floating out in the cytosol, and then there are fixed. Some are actually bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
They do not have a membrane that surrounds them. They are made up of two subunits, a large and a small, and they're used for protein synthesis to make our protein. So again, these are some that are attached here to the endoplasmic reticulum, and we have a small subunit and a large subunit that combine together to create the full ribosome. So the endoplasmic reticulum that you will know as the ER is another site for chemical reactions within the cell. There is a system of internal membranes, so they sort of look like a maze, and there's two types. There's the rough, that is speckled with ribosomes, which make it rough, and then there's the smooth, which is a series of the internal membranes that do not have ribosomes. A rough ER has a rough texture, studded with ribosomes, site of protein production. It, is produ it produces proteins that are used outside of the cell, such as hormones. Now, smooth ER is smooth looking, and in its functions are lipid synthesis, carbohydrate synthesis, the creation of glycogen, which is going to be where we store our energy, and drug detox for the cell. The Golgi apparatus is going to be our UPS, our shipping and packaging plant. It is membrane bound and it functions to refine, modify, and package proteins to ship them out of the cell. So an example is we have our nucleus and it sends out the RNA over here to the ribosome on the rough ER to create the protein. Well, some proteins that just come out of the ER can go straight to the cell membrane and go out. But others must be packaged. So they come over here to the Golgi apparatus and go through a series of packaging processes. Then it is allowed out of the cell. Lysosomes, which are our garbage disposal unit, they contain powerful enzymes that break down digested proteins, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. They function in cleaning up the debris of cells, worn out parts, so that we can reuse the pieces. They destroy bacteria and viruses that are not supposed to be there. And they are for digestion within the cell. Now vacuoles. The vacuoles are sacs. They are membranous sacs and they provide temporary storage for food, enzymes, waste, water, other needed materials. And there is a very, very large one in plants known as the central vacuole. It takes up most of the cell. Now, in animals, we do have vacuoles. We do. They're just not as large as the central vacuole in plants. Such as food vacuoles here in a paramecium. It holds the food once it is brought in. Okay, so chloroplast. Only found in plant cells. Or mostly only found in plant cells. Some have them, some bacteria have them, but when we talk about plants and animals, only found in plants. They are membrane bound, so they are an organelle. They do contain circular DNA, their own DNA, found in the stroma, or the liquid portion of the chloroplast. Now only chloroplasts and mitochondria have their own DNA. Otherwise, we talk about the cellular DNA contained in the nucleus. What, what do chloroplasts do? They are used in photosynthesis to actually create energy and then to create sugar or food for the cell. So we take our carbon dioxide and we take our water and our sunlight and we create C6H12O6, which is glucose, and oxygen. Again, we capture light energy and reproduce food so that the plant can store it for later use. Now, you might want to draw this out. Again, we have an outer membrane and an inner membrane, making it a double membrane. Then inside, we have these discs. These discs are called thylakoids. Now, when those discs or coins stack up, we call the stacks granum. Granum is singular. When we talk about all the different stacks, we say that they are called grana. Around these stacks are going to be the stroma, or aqueous or liquid solution. So the thylakoid membranes, they are the ones that trap the light energy from the sunlight and make ATP. Again, they are arranged in stacks called grana or granum, and they resemble coins. Coins, chloroplast. Coins, chloroplast. 
If you see a jelly bean with coins, then it's going to be chloroplast. Coins, chloroplast. Okay. Next, we have the fluid that surrounds the grana or the thylakoid membrane, known as the stroma. This is where the ACP is used to actually create sugar or the food for the plant. Now, the chlorophyll is found inside those membranes. And we typically associate with chlorophyll with green. And that's how the plants and stems get their green color. Well, it is true. The chlorophyll is what gives them the green color. But how exactly? Well, the chlorophyll accepts all the light waves except for the green light wave. It allows the green light wave to bounce off of the stem or the flower or the plant. And that reflection is what comes to our eyes and allows us to see that color. So the green reflects or bounces off, and that is the color we see. Then we have the mitochondria that are in both plants and animals. Both. They are the powerhouse, the mighty, mighty mitochondria. Double membrane. We have an inner membrane. We have an outer membrane. And it is a jelly bean that has a maze inside of it. It contains its own DNA, its circular DNA, and it functions to convert and release energy as ATP from food through cellular respiration. Please take down that chemical reaction. You will need to know it, and we will go through it. Again, it is a jelly bean that has a maze inside of it, and each of the folds in the inner membrane is known as the cristae. And the fluid inside of that inner membrane is known as the matrix. And we go back and forth in and out of that inner membrane so that we can create energy. Now we have cilia and flagella. Cilia are so cilia. They are short hair-like projections from the cell. And they do a wave-like motion. We have these in our lining of our trachea or our windpipe. And it sweeps mucosa and dirt out of our lungs. And in females, yes, the females out there, you have cilia beating in your fallopian tubes. They move the egg every month from your ovaries to the uterus. Now flagella, it is a tail-like production much longer than the cilia, and it does a whip-like motion to propel the cell forward. Now in humans, gentlemen, you have these because every sperm has a flagella because it must use it to swim to find the egg or the ovum. Functions, structures and aid in locomotion and movement of other substances or objects. When we look at the contrast, animal cells have centrioles and flagella, whereas the plants do not. But the plants have the three C's. It has the cell wall, the chloroplast, and the central vacuole. And that's all I have for you today. So bye now.